I said, put the bunny back in the box. When I tell people that Nicolas Cage is my favorite actor of all time, they usually don't believe me. This guy? Good call, baby doll. Today, most people associate Nicolas Cage with films like this, and this one. I'll admit that these aren't really masterpieces, but people seem to forget that Nick Cage, who is an Academy Award winner by the way, has worked with some of cinema's finest filmmakers. Francis Ford Coppola, the Coen brothers, David Lynch, Brian De Palma, Martin Scorsese, Spike Jones, Ridley Scott. Cage sort of gets passed off as, well, a bit of a train wreck when he is actually a gifted actor. What's fascinating to me is that while Cage is now considered to be this wacky, off-the-wall screw-up, there was a time when he was one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood. So when did all of this happen? When did Nick Cage transition from Oscar winner to this? He sprouted antlers, like a gazelle, <laughs> like an elk. <laughs> he landed again, he ran, ran, ran. He scored a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a common consensus seems to be that the transformation can be traced back to the summer of 1997. Cage starred in two doozies, Con Air and Face Off. You know, I can uh, eat a page for hours. For my money, two of the best guilty pleasure movies of all time. Not only were these two bonkers films released in the same summer, legend has it that Cage wrapped Con Air and was on set for his first day of Face Off just 12 hours later, enough to push any man to his mental limits. But while Con Air, which is the epitome of 90s action flicks, sort of gets all the credit for Cage's tipping point, a more notable switch can be traced back to the previous summer. Nicolas Cage plus Michael Bay seems like a recipe for the most insane movie ever. But The Rock is actually rather reserved by comparison. What's important about The Rock is that it kicked off a new genre, the big, ridiculous, high-concept Nick Cage action genre. This genre includes a movie about breaking into Alcatraz to rescue hostages from U.S. Marines, a movie about prisoners overtaking a transport plane that ends with a crash landing on the Vegas Strip, a movie about Nick Cage swapping faces with John Travolta, a movie about stealing 60 cars in one night, while the concepts are all fun premises, Nick Cage is why these movies are so fun to watch. Because of moments like this. I'm ready. Ready for the big ride, baby. He cranked up what can only be described as Nick Cageiness. While these movies may not be considered good films, they are surely enjoyable. Nick Cage was just fun. And then this happened. Nick Cage ventured down the Nick Cage rabbit hole. Movies where he goes totally insane, but aren't really fun to watch. Well, this one is sort of fun. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! And this basically brings us to where we are today, the Nick Cage persona. This what is he doing stage. The is he out of his mind stage. While his older over the top roles have a sense of charm and fun to them, these are just strange. While all of this may be the common consensus, as a huge Nick Cage fan, I have to actually disagree. I don't think Nick Cage's transformation can be traced back to any specific point. I don't even fully buy into there being a transformation. This was almost 10 years before Con Air. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. He was crazy Nick Cage well before the summer of 97, perhaps even crazier. I mean, this guy insisted on using real cockroaches. And as for this, this was five years after Con Air. And guess what? This got him an Oscar nomination. Making sense of Nick Cage's career just isn't going to happen. And honestly, trying to do so sort of ruins the Nick Cage majesty. He has made a career out of questionable decisions and sharp left turns and going completely bananas. And most importantly, doing whatever the hell he wants. And that's why Nick Cage is my favorite actor of all time.